Today is about collaboration and I'm going to talk to you about what I think is the most important collaboration you will ever get and that is the collaboration between you and your mind. When you can collaborate with your mind and tell it what you want, you will get what you want. What I believe is you need to know four things about your mind and if you put these four things into practice, you will have success across the board at every level. So let me tell you what these four things are about your mind. Your mind does exactly, specifically what it thinks you want it to do. It always does what it thinks is in your very best interest. If you haven't got what you want, but you've got behaviors you don't want, you are not collaborating properly with your mind. But I'm going to change that for you. Secondly, your mind is hardwired to move you towards pleasure and away from pain. And that's why it interests from being tribes people. You survive on the planet by avoiding pain. Thirdly, the way you feel about everything all the time is only down to two things, the pictures you make in your head and the words you say to yourself. And fourthly, your mind loves what is familiar. It is programmed to keep going over and over again for what is familiar. If you want to succeed at any level, you have got to make what is familiar unfamiliar and what is unfamiliar familiar. So let's start with one. Your mind does what it really thinks you want it to do. It's always acting in your own interests. And your mind listens all the time to your language. It works out what you're doing and feeling by the words you're using. So if you say, these exams are killing me, I'm dying under this paperwork, my boss is a nightmare, I'm overwhelmed, I can't cope with the stress. When you say I'm dying under the pressure, this workload is killing me, you are telling your mind you don't want to do it. And if your mind thinks you don't want to do it, guess what? It will encourage you to procrastinate, bunk off, and not apply yourself. Your mind is so very, very specific to the words you use that if you say, I'd love a week off in bed, I'm overwhelmed with this stress, I just wish I could have a week off at home lounging around, your mind goes, there you go, I've given you the flu. Didn't you ask for that? You said you wanted a week off in bed, and I've given you the flu, there's your week off. If you say, I'm dreading having to give that presentation next Wednesday. I do anything to get out of it. Your mind's like, okay, why don't I wake you up with a migraine or an upset stomach? There's your get out of the presentation behavior. And that sounds a little silly, but that is how your mind works. So I worked with um, a footballer who came from nowhere. He was playing for not any division team and he went straight into the Premier League. And he wasn't very tall and he said, you know, I, I feel daunted because I'm not tall. And I said, okay, so imagine you're Maradona. Do you think Maradona says that when he goes on the pitch? I don't feel tall enough. Of course he doesn't. Do you think Michael Owen does that? You have to change your thinking and change your words because the pictures you make in your head and the words you say to yourself will change everything. That's all you have to do. Arnold Schwarzenegger said, modesty is not a word that applies to me in any way at all. I hope it never ever does. And I love that. And Muhammad Ali said, it's people's fear that stops them taking on challenges. I told myself I was the greatest before I even was. I believed in myself. And then guess what? I became the greatest. So what a concept. He told himself he was the best and he became the best, but he didn't just go, yeah, I'm the greatest me. He trained, he worked out, he was disciplined, he believed he was the best. And I worked with the top of their game, top CEOs, top actors, top everything, top rock stars. They all have to tell themselves they are the best, because what's the opposite of that? Oh, I'm just average, I'm not really good enough, I can't really do this, it's too hard, it requires too much commitment. I just showed you whatever you tell your mind it believes. So tell it better things. First you make your beliefs and then your beliefs make you. And if you believe in yourself, other people will believe in you too. And when you stretch your mind to a new dimension, it never, ever, ever goes back because your potential expands as you move towards it. You can't even know what your potential is. So when Roger Bannister 
wanted to run a mile in under four minutes and no one had done that, he did these four things. He told himself, I want to do that. I want to make it happen. He linked massive pleasure to doing that. He saw constantly his body going through the tape at 239 seconds and he made it familiar because he did run a mile in under four minutes. And that same year, eight more people did it. The following year, 57 people did exactly the same thing. So he made what was unfamiliar, familiar. You have everything to gain by doing these four things. Tell your mind exactly what you want. Use really detailed, descriptive, positive, powerful words. It's not positive thinking, it's rewiring your brain for success. And that is success across the board, not just in business, not just in athletics, but in everything, even in your relationships link massive, huge, enormous pleasure to getting there and pain to staying the same. Change the pictures, change the words. When you have a brilliant brain, and we all have a brilliant brain, you have two choices. Rationalize why you feel so bad or talk yourself out of it. I can't cope with these exams. I'm not getting enough sleep. Well, change that to, this is temporary. I can do this. I want to do it. I'll sleep later. And make the familiar, unfamiliar. Most important, make self-belief so normal to you that everyone else believes in you too.